One of the sickest things I've seen in journalism in more than 40 years in the business is big media outlets taking innocent children and turning them into public hate figures, smearing them, abusing them, lying about them, to make them scapegoats in an ideological war. There have now been two such infamous cases in the past couple of years, both in America, but also affecting us here, and both involving the ABC. One, of course, is Carl Rittenhouse. And the other is Nick Sandman. Uh, Rittenhouse was just 17 at the time, Sandman 16. Let me take you through the two cases and show the parallels before I talk to the lawyer for one of those boys. Rittenhouse last year shot dead two men and wounded a third at a Black Lives Matter riot. He'd been defending property from the rioters when he was threatened, chased and bashed by protesters, two of them with criminal records, and one armed with a gun that he pointed at Rittenhouse's head. Rittenhouse fired in obvious self-defence and was last week found not guilty. Now, before the trial, many media outlets falsely claimed this boy was a racist. Some falsely claimed that his victims were black, and even US President Joe Biden falsely claimed that Rittenhouse was a white supremacist. In fact, just last night, even after all the evidence in the trial, and even after the not guilty verdict, the ABC was still telling one falsehood after another about Carl Rittenhouse. And every statement you're about to hear in this ABC clip about Rittenhouse from last night's 7.30 program is false. He had travelled about 20 miles from his home with a weapon. They didn't touch on why. Why exactly did Kyle Rittenhouse get an AK, pretty much for um, AR-15, and go to a different state with that AR-15 doing a protest? Either way, he wasn't of age in order to carry a weapon. Just a couple of days after his release, Kyle Rittenhouse is photographed inside of a bar with the Proud Boys wearing a, short, a shirt that said free AF curses, right? So these are his affiliations that he had with such uh, right-wing organizations. In fact, Rittenhouse did not travel 20 miles from his home to Kenosha with a gun. His gun was stored in Kenosha. In fact, he was of an age to carry it in Minnesota. In fact, the trial did explain why Rittenhouse went to Kenosha. He had a job there, his father was there, relatives. He went to clean graffiti off a of school. In fact, Rittenhouse did not have far-right links. When he was photographed in a bar, it was with strangers who asked for a selfie, and we don't even know for sure they were Proud Boys. And the prosecution said, after a big trawl of his phone and whatever, it found no evidence that Rittenhouse had any affiliations with right-wing groups. So how could the ABC last night report so many falsehoods about a case that's been given so much publicity? It's typical ABC, it turns out, because you take the earlier case of Nicholas Sandman. Two years ago, when he was 16, Sandman was vilified by the US media, CNN, Washington Post, New York Times, so many, as a racist for supposedly walking up to a Native American protester, Nathan Phillips, during a school excursion to Washington, and then intimidating and smirking at this poor man while wearing a Donald Trump cap. That cap, I suspect, was all the proof that the media wanted that Trump supporters were vicious white supremacists. And once again, our ABC joined in this mass smearing of this 16-year-old. This video that's gone viral of yeah. the Native Americans surrounded by mm. Catholic teenage high school students from Kentucky. It's this shot here that bothers me the most, I think, mm. that, you know, he's sort of standing in his face trying to... So it would appear that he is trying to intimidate well, him. Respect, and it's pure hate. You know where I'd build, build a wall, Sarah? Where would you put that wall? Right around that college. Stopping <laughs> those kids getting out into the public. Notice how they spat out the word Catholic. In fact, Michael Rowland and the rest of that ABC posse were wrong. And the mainstream media in the US were wrong. Sandman wasn't intimidating that protest. It was exactly the other way around. Sandman and his fellow students from the Covenant Catholic High School had been waiting by a bus peacefully when they were abused by black racist activists who picked on one of the black students. Damn That's right. Yeah, use a a bunch of babies made out of insects. When you get old enough, they're going to steal your organs. Whoa, hey, hey, we love you, bro. Hey, we love you, kid. Choose, give 
rights. And then that Nathan Phillips walked up to the boys and got right into Sandman's face, banging his drum and chanting and chanting with Sandman not knowing what to do except smile. Now, how on earth did any of that prove that Sandman was a racist? But the media didn't care. It was so desperate to make him a racist that he and his school, uh, his fellow students, even his town were bombarded with protests and death threats, just like Carl Rittenhouse is getting death threats now. Now, my contempt for much of the media is explained by cases like this, with the media preferring a myth to the facts, even it means destroying teenagers to push their ideology. I was joined a short while ago by the lawyer for Nicholas Sandman, Todd McMurtry. Nick Sandman, your client, has rung Carl Rittenhouse to express his support. What parallels do you see between the media treatment of Nick and now Carl Rittenhouse? I think that there are a lot, there are a number of similarities that are important between the two young men. Uh, in each circumstance, they uh, were initially attacked by the media when they were under the age of 18 or under the age of majority here in the United States, which uh, in Nicholas Sandman's case, he was 16. In Kyle Rittenhouse's case, he was 17. So in both circumstances, these were uh, young young boys, young men, uh, and, and they were viciously attacked uh, by the media. So I, I think that is the, the primary similarity. Uh, another important similarity is that in both circumstances, there were uh, many facts stated about each, which ultimately proved to be untrue. Uh, to put this another way, the U.S. Uh, mainstream media uh, said one thing, but the truth was clearly another. And you saw with Nicholas Sandman that they often continued on with these false statements. And you see the same thing with Kyle Rittenhouse, where the false statements are repeated now, the way the media went for Nicholas Sandman was just so extraordinary, pilloried on late night TV shows and the mainstream media. Most of the big media left outfits uh, went for him. How did that coverage affect him? You know, uh, everybody asks, how is Nicholas doing? And I always say he's doing great, but you have to take great uh, and compare it to where he should be in life uh, with where he is. Uh, when you undergo this type of stress, dramatic, long-term stress, and when you're a young person, uh, that stress will basically fry the connections in your brain and cause you to suffer uh, depression and other uh, adverse uh, mental health effects that are uh, scientifically documented. Uh, and so, you know, clearly anybody would choose to avoid that, uh, no matter what notoriety might come from such an unfortunate circumstance. So he's doing great but he would be doing a lot better uh, if he did not have to suffer through what he had to suffer through, you know, for so long and so much negative adverse attention. I noted uh, him saying in a recent interview that he, uh, for a while, he had to look over his shoulder and he still had to accept that he'd be recognised, not always favourably, wherever he went. Um, you have since sued various media organisations for falsely claiming that Nicholas Sandman was a a racist who had instigated and threatened a Native American man. What success have you had with that? There have been a total of, of eight lawsuits. We've successfully resolved two of them with uh, CNN and The Washington Post, and we continue to have lawsuits against ABC, NBC, CBS, The New York Times, and that newspapers, which is, I think, the largest newspaper chain in the United States, uh, Gannett newspapers and, a, and a, a magazine called Rolling Stone, and each of these uh, entities had in common the fact that they alleged that Nick tried to block and prevent Nathan Phillips from retreating from the situation that, that they encountered together. And we've proven those statements to be absolutely false. And that means uh, having proved the alleged fact to be false and the court having determined that those uh, alleged facts are defamatory. In other words, that they cause people to uh, feel hatred, ridicule, and contempt for Nick Sandman, uh, you know, then we were able to proceed and we will continue to proceed with these six remaining lawsuits uh, that we have. Did you ever contemplate suing any Australian outlets? Uh, 
We looked into it, and uh, I think based upon what uh, we learned some from your program and what we learned uh, from other people in Australia that reached out to me, and we looked very carefully at those statements, um, but we did. We ultimately did not. I think it was uh, the the number of adverse statements were so overwhelming that uh, we had to focus our energies on the the large mainstream media outlets in the United States. Well, I have to uh, tell you some bad news. You didn't get an apology on air either, but uh, not from our ABC. It seems though that the media in America, the mainstream media, the big outlets you're talking about, they did not learn their lesson about prejudging guilt and turning a boy into a symbolic scapegoat in the ideological wars. Why do you think they're slow, so slow to learn and, and did it all again with, with Carl Rittenhouse? Well, I have my own theory that I've developed, and this is unscientific. It's just a lawyer's theory uh, after reviewing so many facts and looking into, into these things in such depth and then observing from, you know, a, 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 an observer's position, uh, the Kyle Rittenhouse circumstance. I really think that the, the mainstream media people like to have circumstances like this because, you know, they can so destroy somebody and it's, and it's such a, 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 a amazing thing to watch when they go after and destroy somebody in this manner that, that it's somewhat breathtaking. And I think it scares people so much that it, that it creates conformity or a fear uh, uh, for people, if people gain a fear to speak up, uh, you know, whereas they used to feel very comfortable speaking up and voicing their opinions. Now they are scared to death. And so I think that when you destroy a young person, it, it doubles the fear because the mothers and the fathers and the friends at school see what happens. And then they're trained for life to hold their tongue. The media through these vicious attacks have uh, gained social conformity and enforced a discipline of silence on, uh, most of the United States. And of course, this treatment uh, magnifies the media's own power, and that always goes through uh, a journalist's head. What advice, having dealt with the Nicholas Sandman case, would you now have for Kyle Rittenhouse? Now, the fear is, of course, as he said himself uh, just uh, in that interview on Fox News, that he could now be exploited by the far right as well, turned into some sort of hero. What advice do you have? Well, I, I think that he raises a good point. And I saw an interview with his uh, criminal defense lawyer who said that, you know, he recommended that that basically Kyle change his name and try to blend into the into the woodwork. I don't know that he can do that, uh, but he could certainly try that. But I think he needs to decide what it is that he wants, because I'm sure that there, you know, every defamation attorney in the country is is uh, interested in having uh, these cases for him and, and pursuing uh, claims on his behalf. So he could pursue that route to try to gain his own sense of justice 